The Christian biblical canons are the books Christians regard as divinely inspired and which constitute a Christian Bible. Which books constituted the Christian biblical canons of both the Old and New Testament was generally established by the 5th century, despite some scholarly disagreements, for the ancient undivided Church the Catholic and Eastern Orthodox traditions, before the East-West Schism. In the wake of the Protestant Reformation, the Catholic canon was reaffirmed by the Catholic Church at the Council of Trent 1546, which provided, "...the first infallible and effectually promulgated pronouncement on the canon." by the Roman Catholic Church. The canons of the Church of England and English Calvinists were decided definitively by the Thirty-Nine Articles and the Westminster Confession of Faith respectively. The Synod of Jerusalem established additional canons that are widely accepted throughout the Orthodox Church. The Old and New Testament canons did not develop independently of each other and most primary sources for the canon specify both Old and New Testament books. For the biblical scripture for both testaments, canonically accepted in major traditions of Christendom, see Biblical Canon section Canons of various Christian traditions. <laughs> <laughs> development of the Old Testament canon the Old Testament sometimes abbreviated OT is the first section of the two-part Christian biblical canon and is based on the Hebrew Bible but can include several deuterocanonical books or anagignoskomena depending on the particular Christian denomination. For a full discussion of these differences, see Books of the Bible. Following Jerome's principle of Veritas Hebraica Latin for Hebrew truth, the Protestant Old Testament consists of the same books as the Hebrew Bible, but the order and numbering of the books are different. Protestants number the Old Testament books at 39, while Jews number the same books as 24. This is because Jews consider Samuel, Kings, and Chronicles to form one book each, group the twelve minor prophets into one book, and also consider Ezra and Nehemiah a single book. The traditional explanation of the development of the Old Testament canon describes two sets of Old Testament books, the protocanonical books and the deuterocanonical books the latter considered non-canonical by Protestants. According to this theory, certain church fathers accepted the inclusion of the deuterocanonical books based on their inclusion in the Septuagint most notably Augustine, while others disputed their status and did not accept them as divinely inspired scripture most notably Jerome. Topic. Development of the New Testament canon Topic. The development of the New Testament canon was, like that of the Old Testament, a gradual process. Irenaeus died c. 202 quotes and cites 21 books that would end up as part of the New Testament, but does not use Philemon, Hebrews, James, 2 Peter, 3 John and Jude. By the early 3rd century Origen of Alexandria may have been using the same 27 books as in the modern New Testament, though there were still disputes over the canonicity of Hebrews, James, 2 Peter, 2 and 3 John, and Revelation see also Antilegomena. Likewise by 200 the Muratorian fragment shows that there existed a set of Christian writings somewhat similar to what is now the New Testament, which included four Gospels and argued against objections to them. Thus, while there was plenty of discussion in the early church over the New Testament canon, the «major» writings were accepted by almost all Christian authorities by the middle of the 2nd century. The next 200 years followed a similar process of continual discussion throughout the entire church, and localized refinements of acceptance. This process was not yet complete at the time of the First Council of Nicaea in 325, though substantial progress had been made by then. Though a list was clearly necessary to fulfill Constantine's commission in 331 of 50 copies of the Bible for the church at Constantinople, no concrete evidence exists to indicate that it was considered to be a formal canon. In the absence of a canonical list, the resolution of questions would normally have been directed through the See of Constantinople, in consultation with Bishop Eusebius of Caesarea who was given the commission, and perhaps other bishops who were available locally. In his Easter letter of 367 Athanasius, Bishop of Alexandria, gave a list of exactly the same books that would formally become the New Testament canon, and he used the word, canonized in regard to them. The first council that accepted the present Catholic canon, the canon of Trent may have been the Synod of Hippo Regius in North Africa 393. The acts of this council, however, are lost. 
A brief summary of the Acts was read at and accepted by the Council of Carthage 397 and the Council of Carthage 419. These councils took place under the authority of St. Augustine, who regarded the canon as already closed. Pope Damasus I's Council of Rome in 382, if the Decretum Gelasianum is correctly associated with it, issued a biblical canon identical to that mentioned above, or if not the list is at least a 6th-century compilation claiming a 4th-century imprimatur. Likewise, Damasus's commissioning of the Latin Vulgate edition of the Bible, c. 383, was instrumental in the fixation of the canon in the West. In 405, Pope Innocent I sent a list of the sacred books to a Gallic bishop, Exapirius of Toulouse. When these bishops and councils spoke on the matter, however, they were not defining something new, but instead, "...were ratifying what had already become the mind of the Church." Thus, from the 5th century onward, the Western Church was unanimous concerning the New Testament canon. The last book to be accepted universally was the Book of Revelation, though with time all the Eastern Church also agreed. Thus, by the 5th century, both the Western and Eastern churches had come into agreement on the matter of the New Testament canon. The Council of Trent of 1546 reaffirmed that finalization for Catholicism in the wake of the Protestant Reformation. The 39 Articles of 1563 for the Church of England and the Westminster Confession of Faith of 1647 for English Calvinism established the official finalizations for those new branches of Christianity in light of the break with Rome. The Synod of Jerusalem of 1672 made no changes to the New Testament canon for any Orthodox, but resolved some questions about some of the minor Old Testament books for the Greek Orthodox and most other Orthodox jurisdictions who chose to accept it. References Further reading Topic. Armstrong, Karen 2007 The Bible, A Biography. Books That Changed the World Series. Atlantic Monthly Press. ISBN 0-87113-969-3 External links topic Wells Topical Q&A, Canon 66 Books in the Bible, by Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod Confessional Lutheran Perspective